Hello, everyone. Welcome to SJS Writes, one-on-one -on -one author interview series. I'm Shawnee Smith, founder of SJS Writes. This evening, I am delighted to introduce to you our guest, Dr. Ann B. Rhodes. Dr. Ann B. Rhodes has been an educator for over 20 years. She is a self-published author known for her diverse literary works, including poetry, devotionals, and children's books. Fulfilling her lifelong dream, she published her first book of poetry entitled From the Beginning Until Now in 2016. Driven by a deep passion for using words to inspire readers from across the globe, she continues to craft heartfelt and thought-provoking narratives that touch the hearts and minds of people worldwide. Welcome, Dr. Rose, and thank you so much for joining us this evening. Thank you for having me. Dr. Rhodes, who or what inspired you to become a writer? I would say my late mother. She always encouraged me to do anything that I wanted to do in life. That included chasing my dreams. Although I really didn't discover my gift of writing until my sixth grade language arts class when I was watching the inauguration of President Clinton, I heard Dr. Maya Angelou read her poem on the pulse of morning. And that day I had a vision of one day of becoming an author. I know Dr. Maya Angelou, she's very, very inspiring. And actually my 11th grade year, my junior year of high school, I actually had the opportunity to go see her speak at Georgia Southern University. And that was a great honor to see her in person. Oh my gosh, I can believe it. Who or what influenced you to write a daily devotional and to come up with the title? I wanted to write a different genre of books. My very first book, as you stated, was a book of poetry. So I wanted to go from poetry to devotionals. And then I went back to children's books. But one particular phrase my mother always said in her lifetime was hold on to God's and change in hand. My mother always raised my brothers and I in the church and she had a strong belief in God. So the title actually came from a phrase that my mother would always say in her lifetime. With the that title, I always think of the song, Hold On To God's Unchanging Hand. It's been done so many times, but the message is still, still the same, still touches your heart. Dr. Rhodes, oftentimes in our personal relationships, love is conditional. We're told we have to earn it or act a certain way to receive it. Why is it so essential to recognize God's unconditional love? When you look at people, you know, people love unconditionally for their own personal reasons. And, you know, their love can change over time or as conditions change. However, when we look at God and look at God's love, God loves us because of what we are, not because of what we have done. Remember, we have to remember that God sent his only son into the world to save us through our faith. It doesn't matter what we have done or what we've said. Christ can enter into our hearts and change our lives. So we have to remember that the whole law of God can be summed up into one word, and that word is love. Very well said. We often hear the phrase, I won't believe it until I see it. Can you give the audience an example of living by faith and not by sight? When I look at the biblical teachings of God, one of the biblical teachings is faith is the substance of things hoped for and evidence of things not seen. When you simply put this, faith is believing what God says about something and not what you see or feel. And I'll give you an example in my life. I have two older brothers and one of my brothers and I were the first in our family to go to college. No one else in our family prior to my brother had attended a four-year college and earned a college degree. My mother raised my brothers and I by herself with little or no money. She also got a house with little money just by believing in the word of God. But she always provided for her children. We always had food to eat. We had clothes on our back and a place to stay. That's when your mother laid out the foundation and you and your brothers are the pioneers, your family. Yes, she always taught us that if you want to have something in life, you got to work for it. 
Yes, indeed. What are your top three go-to Bible verses in your devotional? I have on page 77 and 79, Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. And all the ways acknowledge him and he will direct thy paths. Also on page 125, Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. When you put that in simpler terms, believing to some may be impossible. These verses tell us that we are not defined by our circumstances. We are all somebody to God, and it is up to us to decide to live up to what God has made for us. And I'll give you an example. When I was in high school, um, I had a mentor that helped me with writing. I really hated writing when I was in high school, but God gave me the gift of writing and he wanted me to spread his message. So I'm have to live in, I'm living up to what God had made for me to um to write and just continue on his message. That's outstanding that you just took your experience from from high school. And a lot of people just kind of ignore the prompting, but you actually follow through with it. So definitely commendable. And I know for my top one. Bible verse in your devotional is Second Timothy one seven, mm -hmm. where God doesn't give you the spirit of fear but of love yes. and sound mind. Yes. I've had to stand on that several times, so I thank you for putting that verse in. How can your devotional be used as an educational tool for ministry? When I look at this daily devotional and how it can be used as an educational tool, we have to remember that the Bible has a verse for every situation in life. The Bible can address anything and everything that's going to happen to us in life. So this devotional can act as a counselor when you need advice. It can act as a friend when you need another perspective. And it can also act as a common element when things are not going as they should. So when we look at this devotional, it's a condensed version of the world of God, of how he designed it to strengthen and be your character. It's definitely been a guide for me, and I know for so many others. Dr. Rose, what do you want people to take away from your devotional? I want people to be able to understand that God's words is always appropriate for any part of our life. The word of God is not Sunday or Saturday. It is to be lived and relied on for each part of our day. Well said. What current or upcoming projects and events would you like to share with the audience? Well, I have an um, event coming up this weekend in my hometown. It's called the Hummingbird Festival. What I will be participating in this weekend, I'll be able to sell my books and sign autographed copies. Um, there'll be a variety of different vendors that will be there from all different parts of um, the city and different cities close by um, in Georgia. Um, I'm also working on a box set to put all of my devotionals together. I'll be working on another children's book for 2024. And also I'm working on a book on grief. Sounds like your plate is full. And what's the name of your hometown, just in case people are interested in? Hogan, Georgia. It's a small town in um, Georgia, and we have two traffic lights. All right. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> <laughs> How can our audience connect with you and purchase your book? Well, right now, all my books are on Amazon. They can also follow me on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. I do have an email address at ann at win2publishing.com. My Facebook page is pretty much with facebook.com backslash and b rose author if you look me up on tiktok it's going to be at, at smiling annie and my author website is www.authorandbrose.com you've heard it from dr rose and i will be sure to post all your links when i post the youtube video Thank you so much for joining this evening. I really appreciate you sharing your latest devotional book. 
It was my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Thank you.